A friend sent me a video put out by the Creation Ministries International titled Light Sensitive Species, A Problem for Dinosaur Extinction Theories. This comes not long after CMI's full-length movie, Alien Intrusion, which Savannah and I saw in theaters for some reason. By the way, the point of Alien Intrusion is that alien abductions are actually demon abductions, and that you can repel the aliens slash demons by simply calling upon Jesus' name. Anyway, the video we're looking at today concerns the extinction of dinosaurs. We're going to look at the video in its entirety first, since it's only a minute long, and then we're going to deconstruct it. So let's have a look. One of the biggest mysteries in Earth history is what caused the extinction of dinosaurs. There are over 100 theories, including the suggestion that dinosaurs suffered from slip discs, shrinking brains, or chronic constipation. The most popular idea is that a meteorite hit the Earth and caused dramatic changes in Earth's climate, which led to the demise of the dinosaurs. However, even though this story is often repeated as fact, many scientists don't believe it. For instance, in their book The Great Dinosaur Extinction Controversy, two evolutionary scientists Scientists explain how the meteorite idea has become a new dogma that has outstripped the evidence. They expose many problems with the theory. For instance, how did some organisms that require daily sunlight inexplicably manage to survive an event that supposedly blacked out the sun and caused 50% of species on Earth to go extinct? So it appears that even the best evolutionary theory of dinosaur extinction can't see the light of day. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Okay, the video makes a number of errors and questionable implications, so we're going to take it in parts. First, we're going to assume that everything the video says is true. Let's assume that there is currently no feasible hypothesis of dinosaur extinction, that every hypothesis proposed so far has major flaws. So what? That's precisely how science works. In science, researchers look at the available data and construct models based upon it. Those models start out as hypotheses, and as researchers gather data, the hypotheses are either falsified or confirmed. I made a whole video about this process called the scientific method. I also want to point out that even if we assume everything in the video is true, that in no way validates creationism. It doesn't make the genetic, biogeographic, comparative anatomical, embryological, or fossil evidence for evolution go away. Now let's take a look at the video again. One of the biggest mysteries in Earth history is what caused the extinction of dinosaurs. There are over 100 theories, including the suggestion that dinosaurs suffered from slip discs, shrinking brains, or chronic constipation. Again, we make hypotheses to fit the data, and clearly some hypotheses are going to be more substantial than others. Still, wouldn't you prefer researchers make hypotheses that respect the available data rather than just assert what they want to be true? Oh wait, this is the same group that made alien intrusion, so perhaps not. The most popular idea is that a meteorite hit the Earth and caused dramatic changes in Earth's climate, which led to the demise of the dinosaurs. Yes, the meteor impact hypothesis, also known as the Alvarez hypothesis, named after the physicist Luis Alvarez, is quite popular, but only because it accounts for a part of the available data concerning the extinction of the dinosaurs. Specifically, the hypothesis accounts for the gigantic meteorite impact crater in Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, near the city of Chicxulub. And, surely enough, this impact correlates precisely with the extinction of the last dinosaurs all across the globe. This hypothesis has received massive support in the years since its inception such as the existence of Cretaceous Paleogene, or KPG Boundary Iridium, and Platinum, which don't form on Earth in the quantities discovered. KPG Boundary Tektites, which are glass debris ejected from meteoric impacts. KPG Shock Quartz, which is quartz that forms under high pressure. And KPG Impact-derived Diamonds. Some authors have proposed that there were actually multiple impacts, but regardless, the impact or impacts still happened. However, even though this story is often repeated as fact, many scientists don't believe it. So? If 95 out of 100 people thought the Earth was flat, that doesn't make it true. I really shouldn't have to even point this out. The number of people who believe an idea has exactly zero correlation to how true the idea is. 
For instance, a lot of people think daddy long legs are the world's most venomous spider, but that they can't kill you because their mouths are too small to bite you. This is entirely untrue. First, daddy long legs are members of the clade Opiliones, meaning they're not spiders, and don't have venom glands. Second, their tiny fangs are actually grasping claws. The number of people who believe this urban myth about daddy long legs will never affect the Opiliones physiology. And, in fact, most paleontologists do accept the Alvarez hypothesis. For instance, in their book The Great Dinosaur Extinction Controversy, two evolutionary scientists explain how the meteorite idea has become a new dogma that has outstripped the evidence. They expose many problems with the theory. For instance, how did some organisms that require daily sunlight inexplicably manage to survive an event that supposedly blacked out the sun and caused 50% of species on Earth to go extinct? So it appears that even the best evolutionary theory of dinosaur extinction can't see the light of day. I'd never heard of this book before, so I looked it up. The book was written back in 1996 by geologist Charles Officer and science writer Jake Page and claims that volcanism, not a meteorite, was the cause of the KPG extinction. Surely enough, CMI did a book review on it via Carl Weiland. Yes, that Carl Weiland. The one who fabricated in 1992 the claim that Darwin's work caused people to kill Tasmanian aborigines for their skulls. Anyway. Wyland likes that the book is skeptical of the meteorite impact, saying, quote, Good, for a change, to see skeptics being skeptical of something within their own camp, I thought, close quote. <sighs> the irony there almost killed me. Wyland says later, quote, The discussion here also requires no assumption about where in the sequence of layers one locates the flood-post-flood boundary something still the subject of healthy creationist controversy, close quote. I'm not sure if I'd consider a controversy where no one can agree upon how much of the Earth's strata is flood-caused is healthy, but that's just me. Other reviews of the book are less glowing. Scientific American said, quote, Officer and Page have taken on the task of presenting a cohesive opposition to the prevailing impact hypothesis. They have made things much more difficult for themselves, however, by seeking not only to deny the impact extinction model, but also to deny the existence of the impact as well. As a result, they fail miserably." Close quote. Another review in the Transactions American Geophysical Union states, quote, I was startled a second time by the dust jacket proclamation that, unfortunately for Alvarez, many in the scientific community did not support his theory and in fact, later research showed the impossibility of such an idea. I am yet to find anyone else in science who has spoken of the impossibility of such an idea." Close quote. Now let's get to that light-sensitive species issue, which is, after all, the name of the video. We know that the effects of the Chicxulub meteor were far-reaching, since iridium from it landed in Denmark and New Zealand. But what impact did it have on flora and fauna? Let's take the flora first, since it's most pertinent to the video. As it happens, a number of studies reflecting the extinction and evolution of plants around the KPG extinction have been published, including the 2004 paper, Land Plant Extinction at the End of the Cretaceous, a Quantitative Analysis of the North Dakota Megafloral Record, and the 2014 paper, The Global Vegetation Pattern Across the Cretaceous Paleogene Mass Extinction Interval, a Template for Other Extinction Events. What is indicated by the results of such papers is that the sun wasn't simply completely blotted out from the sky, that no sunlight reached the ground. Rather, across the world, the photosynthesis of many plants was evidently interrupted by the atmospheric dust, but this dust didn't remove all light, it merely reduced sunlight in certain areas. The reduction in sunlight wasn't all or nothing as creationists want it to seem, and even if it were, wouldn't the researchers who have been studying the meteor impact for the past 40 years have realized that? I'm always amused when creationists come out with these little gotya arguments that are inextricably based on a naive understanding of the subject. So, what about the effects on fauna? Well, creationists and politicians share an inefficiency to comprehend a certain concept. Nuance. Nuance is especially important here, as it's true that the Chicxulub meteor wasn't the sole death of the dinosaurs. 
Does that mean the meteor had no impact on the dinosaurs? No, of course not. Turns out that dinosaurs and a number of other organisms were already on the decline before the meteor ever struck Earth. Quite a number of lineages within Ornithischia, Theropoda, and Sauropoda were slowly declining in biodiversity prior to the KPG extinction, as well as some plants and invertebrates, including ammonites, chelostomate bryozoans, brachiopods, and bivalves. This evidently was due in part to volcanism in the Deccan Traps, which is a large set of volcanoes in India. So we see that the extinction of the dinosaurs wasn't just a matter of a single meteor, but a collection of events that gradually built up and resulted in the end of dinosaurs. At least some of them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Nice office! <laughs> These things rule. Whatever, send them to Mars.